So you've made the decision to sell your house. Who are you going to hire to help you sell your house? thinking about selling your house, then you are in the right place. Welcome to my Selling Your House series. Kick back, hit like, and subscribe to my channel. My hope is that this series will save you a lot of time and aggravation. In episode one, we covered making a decision to sell your house, and I had mentioned that Normally, I don't hear from sellers until they've made the decision. However, I highly recommend that you start interviewing agents while you're making the decision to sell your house. And out of courtesy, let the agents know you have not made a decision. This way, you can find out what the market's doing, get um, information on how they'll market your house, so when you do make a decision, you know who to hire. Not all agents are created equal. Some will be pushy and say, do the right thing and sign right here. Now is the time to sell. You don't want to wait another day. And others will offer to call the other agents you are interviewing to let them know you chose them to relieve you of that burden. If you want someone who listens to you and takes your best interest to heart, this is when you will find that agent. And they will not push you into doing anything until you're ready. There have been a handful of times where I've sat at a homeowner's kitchen table and discovered that they really did not want to sell their house, yet they felt it was the only thing they could do due to financial hardships. When it comes to financial hardships, there are other avenues a homeowner can take and a good realtor will guide them. Do you really want a realtor whose main goal is to just put a sign in your yard? Or would you rather have a realtor who wants to help you achieve what you really want? When you pick the wrong agent, it may net less money in your pocket, have less than a stellar experience, and it may take longer to, than necessary to sell your house. Let's talk about the elephant in the room. What is the difference between a real estate agent and a realtor, you ask? I'm glad you asked. In order to work in a profession to help people buy and sell property, that person must hold a license in their state. And that person is a real estate agent. The difference between a real estate agent and a realtor, a realtor is a real estate agent who is also a member of good standing with the National Association of Realtors, which is the largest trade association in the United States. The word realtor is a registered trademark and it's some serious stuff, but seriously. Realtors are held to a much higher code of ethics and standards. But what is also very important for you, realtors have access to the multiple listing service. And that is where we put all our listings into one place and it becomes syndicated to Zillow, Trulia, realtors, websites, etc. That's how your property gets exposed to the world. The multiple listing service is also how we get market trends and how we price houses by based on what has sold. Before meeting the real estate agent, I would do some research and it's easy. Google, look at the reviews, are they good? Check out their social media, both personal and professional. Are they family oriented? Are they 
partying all weekend long, having a good time. We all deserve to have a good time on occasion. You may have to dig through all the real estate posts on their personal page, but you'll find out who they are. Also, when you look at their professional uh, social media page, is it canned or is it authentic posts? You may also want to see if they have a YouTube channel. Something else that will set a good agent apart is do they have a secured website? One that starts with HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash Jana May Dream Homes dot com. And do they blog and not just can blog? Are they talking about the community and is it local information? So now is the day you interview the real estate agent. Item one, pricing. This is a very important factor when it comes to selling your house. And all real estate agents, when they come to your house to meet you, should have a comparative market analysis. And a comparative market analysis is properties similar to yours that have sold in your neighborhood in the last three months, six months, 12 months, depending on whether it's a seller's market or a buyer's market. You don't want to price your house too low and equally you don't want to price it too high. If an agent overprices your house, one, just to get the listing, that's going to hurt you. Your house will sit on the market much longer and it'll end up selling a lot less than it would have if it was priced correctly from the get-go. Ask the agent about market conditions and trends. Do they know the median pro sales price in your neighborhood? Do they know the median days on the market in your neighborhood? If they are able to respond quickly, then that will give you a better understanding of the per knowledge of the person you will be working with or may be working with. Item two, use a realtor who specializes in your area. A local expert will have a better understanding and knowledge on pricing and they're likely to have buyers looking in your area. Item three, a good agent will suggest minor repairs or sometimes major repairs when necessary. And a good realtor will never suggest a repair or a change, cosmetic change, unless they're confident you will get return on your investment. And a good realtor will help you stage your house because a good realtor will know what will sell a house. You want the realtor to be completely honest with you and suggest changes that may be necessary to get your house sold and who's not afraid to be completely honest with you. You want a realtor who's going to keep it real. Item four, find out if the agent is full-time or part-time. That's a no-brainer. I'll let you make that decision. Item five, find out how long they've been in real estate and don't judge them if they're fairly new because we all have to start somewhere. Ask them about their support system. Do they have a mentor? Is there someone they can go to with questions? Item six, is the realtor part of a real estate team? If so, ask that realtor who you will be working with. I'm not knocking real estate teams because I think they are a great asset to any home seller. However, you may meet with the head realtor, sign the listing documents, and then you're assigned another agent that you haven't met. So before you sign any documents, find out who you'll be working with because you will need to be comfortable with that agent assigned to you. Item seven, what is the agent's marketing strategy to sell your house? 
do they have a well-structured marketing plan presented at the meeting with you? And I'll just throw out a few marketing items. Open houses, they, they work, they bring in buyers. Uh, two, do they um, prospect to look for buyers for your house? Three, are they contacting other agents in the, who sell in the area to let them know about your house? And four, internet and blogging and social media. There's a lot of power in the old internets. And this is just to name a few. And again, this is a very important factor. Are they looking for buyers for your house? Or did they just put a sign up in your yard and hope that another agent brings the buyers and waiting for the phone to ring? Not me. Item eight. How long is the listing period in the contract? Is it three months, six months, 12 months, five years? Also, can you cancel at any time if you are not happy with the service? Item nine. Uh, it's a doozy, y'all. Is there commission negotiable? Well, the Anti-Sherman Act does not allow us to set a straight across the board commission rate. And I'll go into further detail in a future video about real estate commission. So saying all that, commission is negotiable. However, just something to consider. If an agent is quick to lower their commission rate, how will they negotiate on the sale of your house? Hmm. Also, beware of discount brokers because you get what you pay for. Item 10. Ask the realtor how often and how they will communicate with you. That is the biggest complaint I hear is that they never hear from their realtor. They put a sign in the yard and they run off. At a minimum, it should be once a week. And a good realtor will ask you how you want to be communicated with and how often. Is it phone? Is it text? Is it email? And of course, if you get an offer or if something comes up, a good realtor is going to call you. Item 11. Ask the realtor, what will your closing costs be? And about how much will you walk away from the closing table with? In most states, and Alabama is one of them, we are required to provide an estimated seller's closing cost sheet, which sets out how much approximately, how much uh, your closing costs will be and how much you will walk away from the closing table. When I do my, personally, when I do my estimated seller's closing cost sheet, I throw in the kitchen sink because you never know. And usually they are pleasant, not usually. I would say always pleasantly surprised at the closing table when they get more. Item 12. Does the agent walk you through the home selling process and guide you as to what to expect. Also, a good realtor will walk you through the documents you are signing and explain them in detail and pause to ask if you have any questions. You should know the documents you're signing because they are it is a contract with that realtor and their broker. If you would like a realtor interview checklist, click down below and there is a link to my website and you can download the checklist and interview away. I'm Jana May and I'm a realtor with Exit Magic City Realty in Birmingham, Alabama. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like, subscribe, 
and click on that little notification bell so you can be notified with my next video. In case you haven't seen episode one, Making the Decision, click right here.